Hey chemists, uh, we are entering the unit of electrochemistry, which is how we use chemical reactions to create electricity, uh, and also the reverse of that process. Uh, this is how we get the principle behind batteries. So that means we need to review some redox chemistry from last semester. Remember, oxidation means the loss of electrons. And reduction is the gain of electrons. And you can always remember that with several mnemonics. An easy one is Leo, the lion goes Gur. In other words, losing electrons is oxidation, gaining electrons is reduction. And we can track the change in oxidation state to look at the electron gain or loss of a species. That means we use what are called oxidation numbers. Uh, this is a set of rules that chemists invented that says the more electronegative atom in a compound will have all the electrons uh, as if that's the way it exists. Uh, and it just lets us keep track. It's just a bookkeeping system for electrons that we sort of made up to use, but it, but it works quite well. The rules for monoatomic ions are very simple. The charge is the oxidation state. Remember uh, the difference between oxidation state, which is number followed by sign, and charge, uh, whoops. <laughs> uh, oxidation state is sign followed by number, and charge is number followed by sign. Very few people are gonna care if you get that wrong, but that's why you see them in two different ways. Uh, whereas uh, this is a charge, this is an oxidation state. Anyway, uh, so Fe2 plus is plus two. H is plus one. MnO4 minus, I don't have a rule for manganese, so I'll do oxygen, which is mostly minus two. There's four of them, so that's minus eight. The total has to be negative one, which means the manganese is plus seven. Uh, in Fe3 plus, it's plus three. Mn2 plus, it's plus two. And then in water, the oxygen is minus two, and the H is plus one. Now to balance, we look at who changes. Well, iron changes. Iron goes from Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus. So iron is oxidized. It loses one electron. And then conversely, uh, manganese is reduced. Manganese is reduced. It gains five electrons. That's the first thing I do when I balance any of these types of redox reactions. Now we can write out the half reactions for iron becoming iron three and permanganate becoming manganese two. But if we don't have to write the half reactions, we just want the net balanced reaction, you can take a shortcut and just picture those half reactions with the numbers of electrons in each half in your head and knowing those have to normalize. It doesn't even matter which side of the half reaction those electrons are in. We just know that I have some half reaction with one electron in it and some other half reaction with five electrons in it, that means I'm gonna to need to multiply this half reaction by five and multiply this half reaction by one so that the electrons cancel out. So everything that has a manganese in it gets a one and everything that has an iron in it gets a five. Now, I need to balance the rest by inspection. So, and then everything should be balanced by charge and number of atom. Uh, if I look at the oxygens, there's four oxygens in permanganate. So I'll need four waters. That changes the hydrogen count. So I'll need eight hydrogen ions. So that's just a quick review of how we assign oxidation numbers and then how we balance a redox reaction. Now let's talk about how we use these to create an electrochemical cell. Uh, today we'll just talk about what are called galvanic cells, in which we uh, have chemical energy turning into electric energy. This is for spontaneous processes. This is for spontaneous reactions. Later we'll talk about electrolytic cells, which is the reverse of this. That's when you take electricity and use it to drive a non-spontaneous reaction. But here we're using a reaction that actually does occur and getting electricity out of it. Uh, to do this, uh, let's actually watch a quick video first that animates this for us. Uh, this is an example of what's called the Daniel cell, which is copper and zinc. So here we have a zinc bar uh, in a solution of zinc ion. 
Uh, the metal is acting as an electrode, and it's in a solution of its own ion. Next to it is a copper bar in a copper solution. And then they're connected with this salt bridge, which just has spectating ions that can migrate back and forth. There's sodium ions and chloride ions. Now, to get a potential difference, we can measure it with a voltmeter. A voltmeter connects the zinc bar to the copper bar, and it allows electrons lost from the zinc side to be gained on the copper side. And then if you zoom in on what's happening at the electrode, you can see elemental zinc is getting oxidized and becoming zinc ion. And there go the electrons up into the metal, traveling through the wire. On the other side, uh, we have electrons meeting up with copper ions becoming copper metal. So as the cell discharges, the zinc bar gets smaller and the copper bar will get bigger. Eventually you run out of reactant and the battery dies. This is why batteries die, because you run out of starting material, uh, a reactant in this case. What's up with the salt bridge? Well, here you see ions flowing in. There are some small sodium ions balancing the charge, and over here we have larger chloride ions flowing into the, the zinc half cell. That's just to keep net uh, charge neutrality across the cell as ions are allowed to move back and forth. And there's the overall reaction. Okay, so let's, let's look back at our notes and see how this applies. There's actually a picture of a copper zinc cell on your notes. It's rather small, but it shows, just to remind you of the animation we just saw. We can even write a little bit below each one. This is zinc getting oxidized to zinc ion and two electrons. And then over here we have uh, copper ion plus two electrons getting reduced to copper. So, uh, what, do we, what do we do if we want to turn uh, a chemical reaction into a battery? We need to separate the oxidation reaction from the reduction reaction and force those electrons to travel a path. So we give names to these separated parts. The uh, the site where oxidation is occurring is called the anode. So that's everything related to iron in this case. And the site where reduction is occurring is called the cathode. And that's everything related to uh, manganese in this case. This picture is incomplete. Uh, anode is where oxidation is happening and cathode is where reduction is happening. Uh, you can remember that with a mnemonic uh, and ox chases a red cat. That reminds me that the anode is the site of oxidation and the cathode is the site of reduction. And that's always true. That's what those words mean. These are incomplete pictures. What's going on in the anode is I have iron ions. They're actually becoming iron three ions. So both of them are present in this beaker as one becomes the other. Uh, I'll even draw an arrow to show one becoming the other. And then we have on the other side, manganese two ions uh, are the product of permanganate. Permanganate's getting reduced to manganese two. Iron two is getting oxidized to iron three. So what are these bars in the solution? Well, when you build an electrochemical cell out of metals and they're actually part of the reactants and the products like zinc and copper, those become your metal electrodes. But in the example we're looking at here, I actually don't have any solid metal in my reaction. Everything is an aqueous ion. So we need something that can conduct electricity and make contact with the solutions. Any inert metal will do this. We need inert electrodes in this case. And you'll see many examples of them. I'm going to pretend we're in a really well-funded laboratory and use platinum for these electrodes, but it can be anything as long as it's conductive and inert to allow these reactions to occur. Uh, we're still missing some things in this picture. Uh, we need a salt bridge. So I'm going to connect the two beakers with a tube that allows ions to migrate back and forth. We need cations and anions in the salt bridge. And those can move respectively. Cations will flow into the cathode and anions will flow into the anode. Uh, hence the 
uh, the name cathode and anode reminds me of where they flow to balance out the charge. Where are electrons going? Electrons do not go through the salt bridge. Uh, electrons can only travel, can migrate through the sea of mobile electrons that are in metals. So electrons are traveling in the wire. And they always go from anode to cathode. So I'm going to draw an arrow that shows right to left in this case. There's no real consensus on which side we draw the anode or the cathode. You just have one for each. But electrons will always go from the anode into the cathode, and then ions migrate as a result. So that's a more complete picture of this particular cell. I'll just draw one more thing that is called a line notation for this. Instead of drawing an entire voltaic cell, we can abbreviate it with a line notation. And it's read left to right, sort of how the reaction occurs. Uh, we'll have the anode, which really means the metal that's doing the conduction. So in this case, it's platinum. And then after that, we'll have the anode ions. So any ions that are present in the anode uh, half cell, which really means any ion that's in the half reaction for oxidation. And we just list them with a comma in between. Uh, so in this case, Fe2+, plus, comma, Fe3+. Plus. You just list them. They are, they are separated by a phase barrier. They're in contact with each other, but there's a phase barrier. So we put a single vertical line in between, and that implies a phase barrier. Then in between the anode compartment and the cathode compartment, there's a salt bridge. That's abbreviated with a double vertical line. And after that, we have the cathode ions, followed by whatever's acting as the cathode. So what's in the cathode compartment that's acting as ions? Uh, well, we have permanganate. We have manganese too. And we also have acid. Even though the H plus isn't getting reduced or oxidized, it's present. So we still list it as one of the ions in the cathode. The cathode is another platinum bar. So we just write it with the symbol PT and then there's a phase barrier in between. And that's how you write a line notation for this particular cell. So this boxed section shows every critical piece of information, what's acting as the anode, what ions are in the oxidation half reaction, what ions are in the reduction half reaction, and then what metals acting as the actual uh, electrode for the, the cathode. If I go back up to that zinc and copper cell, it's actually much simpler, the one that we saw the video of. Uh, starting with the anode, that's the zinc. Here it's not platinum, it's actually the reactant zinc. It's separated from zinc ions, that's the only ion that's present uh, in that compartment. Then there's a salt bridge, followed by copper ions in the cathode, uh, half reaction, another phase barrier, and a copper acting as the cathode. So there's the line notation for the zinc copper electrochemical cell. And you can see it kind of reads left to right. Zinc gets oxidized to zinc ion, copper ion gets reduced to copper metal. So it sort of shows a very abbreviated version of the half reactions used in that cell. Okay, well lastly, how much electricity do we get out of these chemical reactions? For that, we need to look at what are called reduction potentials. Um, how much voltage is associated with these reactions. And for this, there's, there's tabulated information. You have a page way in the back of your workbook that shows standard reduction potentials. And these are uh, relative voltages that we've used relative to the, the hydrogen reduction, which we've defined as zero. And everything else is relative to that. So it gives us a way of comparing how much voltage we can get, what potential can we get between uh, a reduction and an oxidation. They're listed in order of most negative to most positive as you go down. And this is pretty comprehensive but it's not even an entirely complete list. It's right next to everything we used for our thermo, 
uh, dynamics unit in the previous unit. These would have to be given to us. These are not things we would ever memorize, but we can look at some trends and make sense why things like lithium ion becoming lithium metal is actually not very favorable. A negative potential is not very favorable. So lithium ion is stable. It's not very good to reduce uh, and become lithium metal. Whereas things that are very unstable, like gold ion, really want to become a stable gold metal. So that's got a very positive uh, potential. Anyway, how do we do this for a sample reaction? Let's consider this reaction. Here's a balanced redox reaction for us. Let's first write out the half reactions that are involved in this. We have uh, iron 3 plus, in this case, is getting reduced to iron 2 plus. And each iron 3 is gaining one electron but there's two electrons gained by two iron threes and two iron twos. Uh, the oxidation I have is the copper. Copper is getting oxidized to copper two plus two electrons. So then what are my potentials for this? Well, if you look at your potential list on the back and let's find iron three and iron two, uh, let's see, iron 2 becomes iron 3. There it is. We have iron 3 becoming iron 2. That's 0.769 volts. So let's write that down. So the reduction potential, E under standard for reduction, is positive 0.769 volts. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. We have twos in front of everything here. And the reaction we just looked at uh, was with coefficients of, of one. No worries, that does not change. If we multiply a half reaction by an integer, there's actually no change. This is important to remember. The voltage goes with the half reaction regardless of the coefficients. It stays the same. What about the copper reaction? Well, all of these uh, reference values are reductions. Everything is listed as a reduction. So if I hunt around and find copper, here's the reverse of the reaction we want. This is 0.339 as a reduction. I want the oxidation. I have the exact same thing, but it's an oxidation. The oxidation is just the reverse. You have to negate whatever it was you had as a reduction, and it becomes an oxidation. So this is negative 0.339 volts. And that's all I need. Then I simply sum the two, and I get a cell potential. So E cell, meaning the electrochemical potential of the cell, is E reduction plus the oxidation taking into account that we've already changed the sign and made it an oxidation. So that's 0 0.769 uh, plus negative 0.339, and that gives me 0.43 volts. And it's important to note, just one more note here, of only voltages that are positive will actually occur you don't get a spontaneous reaction if there's a negative voltage. So sometimes we're given multiple half reactions as reductions and we need to figure out which one we flip. So I'd like you to hit pause and try the last two problems at the bottom. Here's a pair of half reactions. They're both reductions. I can tell because electrons are reactants. Determine which one is the oxidation and which one is the reduction. In other words, which one of these are we gonna flip and make into an oxidation? Write the overall balanced reaction, what's the expected voltage, and then what's the line notation. Try that for each of those, and then check back. Okay, so uh, I know my voltage has to be a positive number, which means I have to change the sign of one of these and then add them together. That means I'm going to keep the first one as a reduction and flip the second one, reverse the second one to make it an oxidation. So I'm gonna imagine I reverse this one and then keep the aluminum one. I also need to balance it. 
So I'm going to have to take this and double it and take this and multiply by negative 3 because the electrons have to cancel out in the end. And when you combine those two things, you'll get two aluminum 3 plus ions uh, plus three magnesium metals makes two aluminum metals and three magnesium two plus ions. The cell potential will be the reduction, negative 1.66, plus the oxidation, which is now positive 2.37 for the magnesium. Uh, you add that up, you get positive 0.71 volts. And then lastly, the line notation is the oxidation half reaction followed by the reduction half reaction. Notice we have metals acting as our electrodes, so I don't need platinum in this case. The anode can be the magnesium separated by magnesium ion separated by a salt bridge. Then we have aluminum ion in the cathode half cell getting reduced to aluminum metal. There's our line notation. Let's see how we did with the other one. Uh, in the other one, we also have to flip one of them. I know that because they're both reductions right now. You can't have two reductions. You've got to have one reduction and one oxidation. Uh, we're again going to keep the first one as a reduction. The second one's going to be our oxidation, which means we have to flip it. The electron count is already one to one, so I don't need to multiply any of the coefficients by anything. I just need to flip the second reaction and combine them. So you get silver ion plus iron two makes silver metal plus iron three. Not too surprising that silver ion is easily reduced to silver metal preferentially uh, to this other oxidation. Even if I'm not familiar with this potential oxidation or this reduction, we should have some common knowledge of the precious metals easily getting reduced to their metallic form. They're more stable that way. What's my cell potential? E cell uh, is equal to the oxidation, 0 0.80 plus the reduction, I have to flip the iron half reaction, it becomes negative 0.77, and I get a very small potential, only 0.03 volts. Now to write a line notation, uh, I start with the oxidation, that's the iron, iron is getting oxidized, those are both ions, I don't have a metal, not a neutral metal, I have a metal ion, but that means I'm gonna need a solid metal, so I'll use platinum for the anode, and then list the anode ions, iron two plus, comma, iron three plus, salt bridge, followed by the cathode. The cathode does have a metal, so the silver could be the actual cathode. So first there's silver ion, separated by a phase barrier, and then silver metal. And there's your line notation. So that's how we express uh, line notations and calculate voltages for redox reactions to create some amounts of electricity. We learned how to use standard reduction and oxidation potentials to calculate voltages. Standard conditions means the mixtures are at uh, room temperature and one molar. We'll learn later how to deal with it when it's not standard and it's not so bounded to those constraints, but we'll start with that. Uh, and then we'll also learn how we take electricity and turn it into chemical reactions.